Today we're going to talk about the deep water start on a trick ski. Um, it's not too different from a slalom ski, it's a little bit different. You don't have a fin to hold the back of the ski in place, you make it a little bit more challenging. There's two different ways of doing this. I'm going to explain a two-footed deep water start where your back foot is in the binding here. John's going to talk about a deep water start where it's just one foot and your, your back foot is free behind you, you use it kind of as a rudder. Um, I like to do things consistently between slalom and trick. So, slalom skiing, I have both feet in a binding because I have two hard shells, so it translates pretty easily for me and naturally into having both feet in the bindings on a trick ski. The real key to doing it, though, is to make sure you have enough ankle bend in the front knee, in the front ankle and the front knee. And when you're in the water, the ski is actually tipped like this. I mean, it's almost vertical. It's not quite vertical. You don't want it like this. You'll plot too much water. But you want to kind of point it at the boat, the tip of the boat. Your back foot's here. Now, the natural tendency for everybody is to put way too much weight on the back foot, which has a tendency to force the ski like this, which makes it very hard to get the ski to plane on the water. Nothing's going to plane like this. But if you think about transferring the weight onto your front foot, and then pointing the ski a little bit towards the boat, it comes up, comes up on plane very, very quickly and very easily. And having your foot in the back binding isn't doing anything other than allowing you to have a little bit of steering control of the ski because you can push with your back foot left or right in order to point the ski and keep it pointed at the boat. So in, my, in, a, in a two footed deep water start, you're actually directly affecting the attitude of the ski towards the boat. Whereas in the one-footed start, you're really using your back foot as a rudder through the water to do the same thing. All right? Neither one is wrong, neither one's better, they're both the same, it's just whatever you're comfortable with. Um, I would say that to do a deep water two-footed start, you need to emphasize the ankle bend a little bit more. Um, and it's harder to do because you've got this back foot back behind you that, that wants to resist that action. So we'll, uh, we'll demonstrate it in the water and uh, you'll, you'll be able to see how I do it and how I get the ski to come up and kind of roll up onto the surface of the water like that until it's planing versus allowing the ski to just push this way, which means that I've got too much weight on the back foot. I'm leaned back a little bit, but my knees are really close to my chest. And as the tension comes on the rope, I'm gonna grab hold with both hands. Go ahead and tension the rope there, Sean. Okay. Keep the ski tip up out of the water. All right, ready when you are, Sean. I always do my starts with my foot out. I I can do it with my uh, back foot in here, but I always do it with it out. I personally think it's a lot easier, um, but people disagree on that. Yeah. And the one thing of, of having your foot out, it, it's just trailing beside you. Your leg is just here, and as Chris said, you are able to use that as a, a bit of a rudder. And you can actually, as you're coming out of the water, you can put a little bit of pressure on, on the water with that foot and kind of help you balance a little bit. The one thing I like about having the foot out is, as Chris said, you got to have your weight on this front foot. You can't have your weight back here. That's well, true. Your foot is not there, so you can't have any you weight. You can't have it. It any forces weight you there. to have weight here. That's true. But I, I would say, Chris, in, in either uh, technique of doing it, foot in or foot out, uh, new skiers often start to plane out of the water, and the ski starts wiggling like crazy. That's a sign of not having enough weight towards the front of the ski. You probably have all your weight on your heel, or if your foot's back here, back here. Yeah. So if you are feeling that wiggling, concentrate on putting uh, the weight on the ball of that front foot, and it'll allow the, track, the ski to track more easily. Makes sense. All right, so this is actually a pretty good time to introduce two concepts that, that uh, have evolved in, over, in my mind over the whole course of my skiing career, which is center of pull from the boat your relationship to the handle, your body's relationship to the handle, and then center of pressure, and that's the relationship to the pressure of the water against the ski. Whenever the ski starts to do this, it's flopping back and forth and you're having, a, having trouble controlling it, it's always because the center of pressure, the center of, of pressure of water against the ski is too far back on the ski. So if you think about where I've got my hand here, it's very hard for me to control what the ski is doing 
when the center of pressure is way back here under this binding here, right? So it's going to be flopping around. It's a lot easier to control if the center of pressure is in the middle of the binding. You're not over the middle of the ski. You're not having to deal with the weight of the ski flopping side to side. And that's really what we're talking about here about keeping weight forward on the ski. But the thing is, a lot of people when they say weight, when we say weight forward, automatically what happens is their shoulders move towards the ski like this. And they end up rolling their shoulders forward. That will not work. All right. Actually, what that does is it does move the center of pressure forward, but in a, such an unstable way that the center of pull gets in front of the center of pressure. And as you can imagine, if you ever look at a slalom skier. The center of pull is always slightly behind the center of pressure. It has to be, otherwise you just get over the front and the ski would dive and you just huge bad falls when you do that. So center of pressure always has to be slightly in front of center of pull. And the more you can do that, the more successful and stable you're going to be. And we'll talk about center of pressure and center of pull through a lot of different tricks and a lot of different types of maneuvers. Maintaining it and being aware of it will really help you on all your skiing. Okay.